plantation I have seen across the country are nothing but amalgamation of few, what do you call, tree species. For example, two to three native species along with many exotic. <coughs> Forest community cannot be created through only fast, so-called fast growing plants. You need to look at the ecological history of the site. Exactly. And you try to find out reference ecosystem, closest reference ecosystem. Only then you approach in which you have slow growing, fast growing, medium growing, grasses, shrub, herbs. You have to bring everything. So 1,000 tree per hectare cannot be an ecosystem. We must see per hectare at least 2,500 to 3,000 vegetation, which include top canopy, middle story. These are two tree level, and then under story and ground vegetation. Yeah. When you look at the carbon sequestration, grassland are playing very, very important role. Yeah. We, we have uh, aspects with green glass. And we try to see that every piece of land should be green. Third desert, you have a small groups. If you see, for example, Caparis decidua, it is Caparis is teat, teat. But see, no, 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 it is not good. Bring big trees. Where is water to sustain that tree? Even though you bring tree, after some time, soil moisture will decrease so much that even ground, all ground vegetation like Caparis decidua will go, and other species will go die. You have everything except forestry because you are you have so many paperwork. You are doing many things in your office. Hardly you find time to go in the field. Do you think institutions work in very silos? Like scientists are not taking the effort to communicate, to engage with the policymakers. Knowledge arrogance of academician and power arrogance are bureaucrats are not married together. For legal policy, and I welcome you all to this gathering. Uh, Right. Uh, in this session, this is the first episode of the season two of the Green Mandate session. Uh, Viti Center for Legal Policy is a research think tank doing legal research in the uh, to make better laws and improve governance for the public good. Viti office in New Delhi, Bangalore, and Mumbai aims to do uh, high quality research, deliver original uh, research, and engage with government public institutions and other CSOs uh, to inform policy making. The climate and ecosystem team at Vidhi aims to reform <coughs> conservation laws to make, to make them more ecocentric and proactive. Our vision is to create effective, responsive and relevant laws to address contemporary environmental concerns and ensure a, safety a safe future for not just people, but also for non-human life forms and natural ecosystem. We believe that meaningful public engagement, both at the time of framing of the laws and at the time of implementation, is necessary to have to, to ensure the success of such laws and policies. The Green Mandate is a talk series launched in the year 2022. The series was started to create a platform to dive deep into issues and develop an in-depth understanding of the nuances and complexities involved in modern conservation challenges. In the last edition of the Green Mandate, we had seven sessions with prominent speakers delivering talk on issues such as climate financing, wildlife protection, and animal rights. Today, we are gathered here to, for the start of the second season of the Green Mandate. In the first episode of this season, we will be speaking or we will be discussing the topic afforestation, reforestation, and eco-restoration in India with noted, wi noted wildlife scientist and eco-restoration expert Dr. Fayad Fayaz Khutsa. The discussion uh, will be moderated by Vidhi's climate and ecosystem team lead, uh, Devaditya Sinha. I would now like to request both the speakers to please come on the stage. Dr. Fayaz Ahmed Khutsa is a professor level faculty and at present scientist in charge of the Biodiversity Parks Program. The program is a is a initiative jointly taken by Delhi Development Authority and Center for Environment Management of, De of Degraded Ecosystems, University of Delhi. Dr. Product, uh, yeah. Dr. Fayaz has a wide experience of more than 20 years in the field of <coughs> establishment and management of biodiversity parks, biodiversity assessment and monitoring, wetland management, environmental education and communication, and community participation in conservation. He is also an expert in number of go several government and court appointed committees wherein he provides legal assistance or technical assistance in the establishment, management, and restoration of biodiversity parks and wetlands. Dr. Khutsa's research 
on Kuno Wildlife Sanctuary was relied on by the Honorable Supreme Court while deciding the Asiatic Land Translocation Project from Grey National Park to Kuno. Dr. Khutsar has also been awarded the Carl Z's Roll of Honor in 2008 for excellence in wildlife conservation. Uh, Devaditya is a senior resident fellow at Vidhi Center for Legal Policy. His research interest lies in the intersection of ecology, law, and policy. A recipient of the Sanctuary Wildlife Service Award in 2019, <coughs> Devaditya has over 11 years of professional experience working with legal and policy issues related to the environment and wildlife protection. He is also a member of the IUCN Species Survival <coughs> Commission's beer, beer Specialist Group and Eco Energy Network, Helsinki, and also a managing trustee of Vidyan Ecology and Natural History Foundation. Devaditya has also initiated a number of litigations in various courts on issues related to environment clearance, declaration of eco-sensitive zones, and compensation for eco environmental damages. Now, the discussion will be held for 45 minutes, wherein both the speakers will discuss few important issues. <coughs> After that, we will open the floor for 30 minutes for question and answer session for the audience. I would request all of you to please mute your digital devices to avoid any disturbance. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sushank. And I also welcome you all and Dr. Fayaz uh, today. Thank you. So before we begin uh, this session, <coughs> so I will like to uh, give a little bit context of this talk and why we're having this session. So one of the reason is that uh, you know there's a huge push for afforestation across the country, and not push not only from government but also from non-government sectors. And in very recently in the budget session, the uh, finance minister she said mentioned about various schemes, uh, most probably like uh, importantly <coughs> the Mishti scheme, mangrove initiative for sustainable this uh, uh, plantation in uh, shoreline of India. <coughs> and we, and uh, in her words, I just want to reiterate what she said in the budget: building on India's success in afforestation. Misty will be taken up for mangrove plantation along the coastline and on salt pan lands, wherever feasible through convergence <coughs> between Manrega, this Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Guarantee Program, uh, CAMPA, Compost Afforestation Fund, and other sources. In this budget, it also mentions that the National Sovereign Green Fund will be used to uh, like, you know, plant trees and forest across the country. So obviously, we are going to uh, expect a huge push for plantations, not only this year, but in the coming years to come. Other thing is that <coughs> generally it is a common belief that plantations are a, like you know very noble uh, thing to do and it is very good for environment. But whenever I talk to people like uh, uh, Dr. Fayaz, Vijay is sitting here, Anand Banerjee is also sitting here, so Rohit is there, Akash is also here. So when you talk <coughs> to people in conservationists, they always have a different perspective. So they say plantation is actually doing more damage to the environment than like you know because anything. It may be good for a particular situation, particular circumstances, but it's not good for everything. Like one medicine cannot treat you for every uh, thing. So similarly, so like you know, when you plant trees in the habitat which is not very conducive for trees, it can actually cause local uh, local extinction of native wildlife. It can change the soil characteristic. It can also deprive the local communities from the ecological services we uh, like we derive usually from uh, any ecosystem. And I think Dr. Fayaz uh, is the is uh, the most renowned scientist in the country today, and who is deeply involved in eco efforts. In fact, the Yamuna Bardis Park, uh, I have been visiting this park since 2004. It was being developed, and today it is a role model for the entire country. Now I think he's managing seven <coughs> biodiversity parks, 15 are in process, and uh, so basically uh, this. Uh, if you go, I don't know how many of you have been to this park. This is like an example of how to ecologically restore a system. It's not only just trees. So. Uh, but Dr. Soya, Fayyad also wishes to show some slides, just to, yes, yeah, to like, uh, just uh, <coughs> set, uh, you know, uh, inform the audience about what is this, uh, like, an you know, eco station and the things you have done. So very quickly, maybe you can... Five minutes. Uh, five minutes, you can show <coughs> slides, yeah. Can Thanks. you stand, because... Yes, yes, sir, please, please, you can go. <coughs> Where is the screen? Yeah. Screen is here, and mic just, is here. I see. Just, just stand here and speak, there is no problem. Actually, uh, thank you so much Dev, for calling me and uh, very good evening. It's very interesting to see that the moment we talk about environment, quickly we jump to the plantation. Oh, let's start plantation. What to plant, where to plant, how to plant, no answer. Recently, I was in a religious, what you call congregation, where two sons told me, and to the audience, that let's plant people and content. So 
So when my turn came, I stand up and said, Baba, please shut up. Why people in Bhattu? Everywhere. They are kings of the forest. If kings will be everywhere, how they will survive without what you call their Prajapan. citizen, without Praja? Rather, I cannot survive without Praja. So this is one of the glaring, what you call, fact of plantation today. Uh, quickly, I'll see because I had no title to write. So I have written ecosystem approach. A word which is used, overused, misused, and abused. Next page. You see now. Actually, plantation being seen as I have written is one stop solution for all environmental problems. It is true. But many times, though well intended, it what do you call, finally concludes in a different way. The outcome is not so encouraging at many places. And in fact, uh, many places it is a serious problem. Next please. So, when you look at India, Desert, where desert is being seen as degraded area. My voice? Yeah, is recording. Recording. Actually, uh, yeah. main ye bata ki, now you look at it. When you look at Indian desert, we, you have very warm desert, you have very cold desert. And we always see that until unless you have green stuff to see to your eye level, nothing is survived. And therefore, we are putting a lot of effort using those landscape for greening, what Devo was telling. Next, please, quickly. So what is the solution? We must understand that there, there is a solution. And the solution lies with the science, and that is ecological restoration. How do you see it? Ecological restoration, in fact, is a science where you help one ecosystem which is degraded, damaged, or even lost to bring at a level where it performs its ecological function. That is the ultimate objective. So, and it also provides air to breathe and water to drink. I must tell you to the, I must tell this August, what you call gathering, that two component of life, whether it is abiotic, but still that air and water nobody can make. What will make? Is plant. Baba ji, hawa or pani koi nahi banayega, sir pauda banayega. Right. So therefore, therefore, we have done some experiment and we came out with a model called Delhi Biodiversity Parks of DDA, where many ecological functions are now reality. What we call reality is trophic cascade, what we have prepared from bottom up, how something sit on the top and look at the entire exercise. So uh, that become very successful model across the country. Next, please. This is one of the example quickly I'll show that how we have started and where we reached quickly quick this is uh, one of the another example that are full of human habitation around with one oasis next please here what I'm trying to convey that ecological restoration is not plantation it is bringing something very in terms of natural heritage where you have top canopy middle story under story and ground vegetation where you work we, where you give respect to your grassland as you give respect to your tree. Next, please. You give respect to your wetland. And wetland must not be planted with a lot of trees. If you see, it's, it's, it has entirely different concept. You have tall grasses all around. Next, please. And this is one of the Morom mine, clay mine pit where we have restored it without changing the landscape. Next, please. And this is characteristic grassland has been created. Next, please. And this is how we have managed slope. Next, please. And this is very interesting to see that one Nila horse with historical was providing water to entire South Delhi, that is Mehrali. Over a period of time, it was dead. And when that Commonwealth game, uh, during Commonwealth game, this bridge was made, it was finally dead. Citizen went to court, court asked the concern authority, and finally we were contacted and we restored this. Today, you go, you will see that how one MLD sewerage has been treated for restoring this wetland. Next, please. <laughs> And finally, we have created a complex ecosystem. What do you mean by complex ecosystem? COVID has suggested, not I am not saying UNEP, chief suggested that wild must be kept wild. What does this mean? Plant alone cannot help you. You need to create complex ecosystem where any pathogen should not go out. It should get diluted within the system. If your system is not complex, 
you are simplifying your system through roads and many other things through alien species, then they will tend to go out. They will spill over and create problem what happened in what you call COVID. So we have created and especially hog deer which was reported in 1834 now came to Yamuna Basti Park. Next please. So here the last I, I would like to bring to your notice that can't we see road as an ecosystem? Just I tried projecting a model that uh, if you see how it works. No, it, it doesn't work. You have to Danda, hi. I think the top button. If you see quickly, uh, this is uh, usually you see the construction of houses, etc. Then you have a tree line. Then you have a footpath. Then you have flower bed, etc. Then you have a storm drain along the road. Then you have a road. Then you have a central verge. Similar way, other side you see. And unfortunately, when you look at the entire design, all are similar. A central word, you have tall tree like Bombay Siva, like Simal. Next, please. So when you look at it, this is the character. It is from Delhi, but it is not on ev every road. This is the character you see is required because central verge has different role to play. It is not only for ecosystem restoration, but it is there to handle other issues like particulate matter. During fog, how it creates clean the lower strata. Next, please. The, so these are the things we need to understand that why we bring tree on central verge. Next, please. And uh, these are the character. Next, please. So I conclude by saying that not all brown is bad and not and not all green is good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. And I think this uh, set the platform for the discussion. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> so I want to start with the very basic. So there is a long legal dispute about understanding of forest. Like mm -hmm. what is a forest? Until today, we do not have any legal definition of forest in at least the law and policy space. Although we have some like you know uh, global understanding, even Supreme Court has said in Godavarman judgment that you know we should understand forest by its dictionary meaning. <laughs> so it actually confuses more because we have so many dictionaries. Okay, I say this is my definition, he will say my definition. But there is some global understanding of what is the forest. But interestingly, when I was reading out about this uh, topic, so I came to know that historically forest was used for like the term forest, use of term forest is contrary to the modern use. Because initially it was a forest used to denote <coughs> like something which is used for recreation. Then it can become hunting. Then the focus was on timber extraction. Then the focus one when we start cutting trees, then the when there was biodiversity loss, the focus become a biodiversity conversation. Now in a climate crisis age, we are talking about carbon sequestration. So this is where we are today. Plantations because we want plants to sequester carbon. This is the biggest threat. Now in this biggest threat, we are losing out the other important uh, characteristics of the forest. Right. So I just want to start with the definition and then I will ask you as a scientist who has worked for such a long time on wildlife and different kind of forestry in India. I know you have worked in MP, you have worked in uh, Chhattisgarh in different places, Himalaya also you have worked and now in Delhi. So uh, according to UN CBD, which is I think uh, used by every other in some uh, like form or other, but this is the basic definition which globally people follow. This is from Convention of Biological Diversity. So it says forest means a land more than 0 0.5 hectare with a tree canopy cover of more than 10%, 10%, which is not primarily under agriculture mm. or other specific non-forest land use. In, it also says in case of young forest or regions where tree growth is climatically suppressed, the trees should be capable of reaching a height of 5 meter in situ and of meeting the canopy cover requirement. So, irrespective of law and ownership. Yeah, this is just yeah, this is just a basic definition for what CBD and FAO also uh, address this definition. Uh, so, I just want to understand from you, like as a scientist, do you agree with the definition? And if not, then uh, and also the common perception of a forest. Uh, actually, when you look at definition itself, it suggests that uh, it is not complete. Because most of the time, the moment you talk about forest, it talks about trees. A land full of trees, when you look at dictionary, law, um, uh, people say tree. And uh, therefore, in my opinion, when you look at forest, it is a large congregation of vegetation which is arranged as a top canopy, middle story, under story, and ground vegetation which constitute a forest. Here you have a tree, we have a second layer of tree, then we have a shrubby layer, then you have a grasses and herbaceous layer. Only then it, it should call as a forest, in my opinion. But the definition we have given that is needed by court, how court will decide? 
For example, because many cases going on and pending in, in the <coughs> court. So the only way court can come out with when you give some area. And then you look at the density and canopy cover, canopy of that area. So 10% and 0 0.5 hectare make a sense, actually. But as a scientist working in the field, as a researcher working in the field, I understand that forest is not congregation of trees. Thank you. I think this uh, gives some perspective uh, from scientists. And uh, so now uh, I will just start with the actual topic we want to discuss with you. Uh, we often seen, and especially in the judgments and orders and various <coughs> policy documents, that we use the terms forestation, plantation, afforestation uh, very <coughs> interchangeably. Like you know, so and uh, and this is when and when we discuss with you and other conservation, we say that actually it should be ecological restoration not afforestation, because afforestation is causing more damage, as you have mentioned. So can you just uh, explain through maybe examples, uh, like why we should focus more on ecological restoration and not afforestation, if we can cite some examples, where afforestation actually has caused uh, more like you know, adverse impact on the ecosystem? Actually, there are two terms you have written, afforestation and reforestation. Those are very important to understand. When you look at afforestation, as the name suggests, that you have an area, historically that was not a forest. You start plantation. You plant a tree, mm -hmm. and that is afforestation. Because the moment you call plant, plantation, you bring tree mm -hmm. for plantation. Similarly, reforestation, historical forest area which is degraded, you start plantation. But these plantation I have seen across the country are nothing but amalgamation of few, what do you call, tree species. For example, two to three native species, along with many exotic. And I have seen in Jharkhand, in, uh, and uh, for especially for mined out area restoration, where uh, department, government has used uh, such species uh, which can not die quickly, do not require large amount of water, and therefore it survives. So for example, Prosopis juliflora. Somebody was talking about Sue Babul yeah. outside. That you see now, so uh, afforestation and reforestation never reach to climax. And it has limited ecological goods and services. For example, I tell you, we must understand that every individual tree has its role in an ecosystem. If you bring a tree without looking at that system, then probably the entire microbial flora may change of that site, mainly to loss of soil moisture. The soil genesis will reduce. There are many questions, ecological factors comes together. It is not only tree, but tree brings many things. So therefore, we must understand that afforestation and reforestation cannot be, what you call, bring perfect good in, goods and services. And Delhi is the best place to see. Look at Delhi Ridge, which is spread on an area of 7,777 hectares. When you go to Ridge, you will find that 70% of area is dominated by single species. And that is nothing but Prosopis juliflora. <coughs> I have seen Prosopis scenario. Many people, many uh, experts suggest that there is no Prosopis scenario. Can you uh, please mention the common name of the Prosopis juliflora? Uh, <coughs> Prosopis juliflora is Vilaiti kikkar. A kicker brought by Bilayat, brought from Bilayat by Bilayati people, like Angres brought them. And historically, 200 years ago, it was brought. And when you look at the Bilayati kicker, it's a very, it has very different character. Leaves are highly inflammable. Ne they never converted to humus. Please visit uh, what you call uh, ridge anywhere. Pots, you see, they are so thick and seeds are so much embedded, it does not require any support. Fell down, grow. Roots emits something else, some chemical, not allowing any native species to grow. So entirely a terrorist tree, I can say, is Prosopis juliflora. So <coughs> afforestation and reforestation, as I told you, never reach to climax. Therefore, the ecosystem, uh, goods and services we expect from forest, we never achieve it. But when you look at the ecological restoration, I said, where you help an ecosystem, which is degraded, damaged, or even lost, and for me, that is based on very sound ecological principle. What does it mean? It means, it says that you need to have a site. The moment you have a site, please look at the ecological history of the site. That is first and foremost aspect of ecological restoration. If you are working, but until unless you know ecological history of the site, if you start plantation of anything, 
that cannot be restoration again you will reach to a forestation so you look at the ecological history of the site then try to find out a reference ecosystem if it is not in neighborhood try to visit little you walk little bit more for example if you see aravalli hill ranges which covers from udaipur to delhi you please look at it because people tr must understand i work in chambal and i have seen that over period of time high pro how prosopis juliflora has killed chambal and you will even aristida finding aristida is a grass is very difficult in chambal so therefore when you go for restoration you look at the entire range and only then you start you prepare prescription for the site like a doctor you pre prepare prescription that first i will do this and then i will do this and that way you proceed in ecological restoration then you reach to an what you call functional ecosystem where plant and animal interact together and it become functional system which gives you ecological goods and services this is yeah. ecological restoration so sir, <coughs> sir can, like can you give us uh, give us some example like you have spoke of the examples of the uh, like floral uh, diversity so does this kind of plantations in some places when we do afforestation so is there any example where yes. we can say that you know this has caused actual <coughs> extinction of any wild animal but best example would be bunny grassland if you see it that how prosopis juliflora has created such a huge problem not only for wildlife not only for plants and animals but for the neighborhood communities they are maldaris they are suffering they are pastoral community so therefore when you look at bunny the lesser cats are almost disappeared because at the ground level when you look at the energy transformation which is carried out by lesser cats less the uh, carnivore which feed on ground like on indian hare and mouse and other but since the canopy cover is so thick grasses has gone those animal has been wiped out like caracal yes uh, i reported caracal when i was working in wind on nilgai project for preparing mass capturing uh, protocol for nilgai there i have seen after 6 month one caracal with a small kitten so actually but that area is being killed by people so th therefore <coughs> not only that i have seen for example kuno national park is the best example everybody knows kuno for a different purpose yes. which i won't mention here so when you look at kuno i seen kuno from very uh, what do you call when it was a baby and i uh, over period of time people thought that let's create grassland dreamed and some of the officer called me fayaz bhai aa jao we will create grassland and then they started using heavy machine for example tractor to kill jejefus nimularia you must be knowing jharberi that tiny bear they thought that they will kill it and then beautiful grasses will come in my in my study i had find that dicanthium is a grass palatable grass botrocloa is a palatable grass they were doing excellent but the moment they spend money to kill those grasses now entire area is dominated by single grass species that is desmo stachya bipenata it is a kusha grass which is not palatable so this is the way things happen this is the way things happen because it is our perception we always see that we are supreme primates and whatever we think that become law but i tell you ecology is science of interaction you sit there learn and then you what do you call <laughs> intervene you are nobody to say that i will do a here and you will do b here you ask that system that a is possible there if that system is go going to accept your a if not you forget about it because uh, one more example i'll give you we have done uh, what do you call nila hoz where we tried uh, what do you call cleaning sewerage through constructed wetland system and you will surprise to know we are using 25 species of plants 25 27 28 species how we found it we sat down through drains hours together to see that a plant is growing along the drain and the characteristic of drain is a chemically how this plant is growing and what this plant is doing then you study in the lab or oh, a is fixed for it that way you were, for example in yamuna when we started <laughs> bija has visited initial days when we started it was full of salt at some places the ph was 9.8 what to do initially somebody says that let's do some chemical exercise then we fought hard and we try to find out one species of grasses and that too from haryana border after paddy was harvested the high tds water which was logged we kept sitting for 2 3 months to find out 
that which species comes first, even though TDS is very high. And we found a tiny grass came first. We kept waiting to grow it. And after some time, we take it out and we found it is Leptoclova fusca, a grass which has capacity to reduce pH from 10 to 7. So these are the way you biologically remediate it. Yes, As a human beings, you cannot think that technically you shot out biological problem. Yes. So sir, I will just uh, now I want to <coughs> ask you some uh, legal and policy question, but mm. you can answer in your own scientific uh, way. Mm. So in India, so we have a thing called Kampa. So for people who don't know what is Kampa, it is a compulsory approach. If you want to divert any forest, then you take permission <coughs> from central government. And the rule says that whenever you want to divert a forest, you have to plant equal or more number of like area uh, of forest in the of, of the area diverted. This is what uh, Forest Conservation Act says. So for that money was going somewhere, and then Kampa Act was brought so that this money can be <coughs> properly managed. So this is how Kampa Authority was there. This is the state, central authority, state authority also there. So now. This is a little uh, like it's a long question, so I will try to first explain yes, the audience and also like come to you. Mm. So now it has been amended very recently, but uh, in practice, so I just want to share few certain things. One is that the Kampa says that if you are planting uh, you, uh, trees in some uh, compensatory area, it has to be either <laughs> non-forest land. If you don't get non-forest land, then you can plant trees on degraded forest or some whatever notified as a forest. So degraded forests, like actually in a law, when we study about grasslands and all, these are actually classified in a, there's no definition of grassland or scrublands. So we actually, in a policy way or whatever bureaucratic way, they see anything which is devoid of any uh, tall trees <coughs> as a degraded ecosystem or degraded forest. So in the forest rule, it appears, like you have to uh, select those areas which are degraded forest, either, either <coughs> notified for, uh, forest or notified uh, National Park Sanctuary, and there are some rebates. Like if you select some site which is within the protected area and degraded, then the 25% rebate in the area, something like that. If you plant which is adjoining a National Park Sanctuary, then only 15%, something like that. I don't, I don't want to quote the exact figure. This, this rule is there with me. But the point is, this rule actually encourages. Now another thing, uh, very, and this has been happening since years only become very visible last year when due to this uh, Great Andaman uh, Nicobar uh, Diversion Forest, that if you want to do compass of uh, for a project which is situated in a state which has high forest cover, more than two third or in the case of Hilly or one third in case of <coughs> other states, then you can plant trees in a states which are devoid of, like which have less forest cover. Okay. For example, like in the case of Tehri, I want to say, <coughs> this also came in the parliament discussion recently, that for Tehri Dam, the, uh, in the Uttarakhand, the uh, forest station was done in uh, somewhere near South UP, Jhansi, somewhere near there. Very recently, this is a gate of Naman uh, uh, diversion, the conversation is done in MP. And there was a whole like story behind, no state was willing to give the land, and then MP was a state who said, okay, we will do. So basically, the point is, and one more point, I think <coughs> this is important, that's why I'm getting this question. The rule 11 of this uh, forest conservation rule, it says, that a specific density, now you said the law needs to sum numbers. So the rule says that the specific density for raising compensatory afforestation shall be minimum can canopy density of 0 0.4 or more and must reach 0 0.7 in its fifth year. This is a condition in, in the rules. Like even the committees, the first advisory committee, they cannot go beyond the rule. They cannot <coughs> say that you can uh, have trees less than this kind of rule. So for example, if you're the FSC and you say, no, I am okay with having 0 0.2 but you create a good shrubland, good uh, grassland, then this, uh, you know, compensation will be considered as a failed, like you have not done any work. So, now, in your experience, uh, and there is one more thing, sorry, uh, one more caveat to it, the minimum, and the rule also encourages states to create land banks, land banks of 25 hectares, <coughs> north of each, like, so states are encouraged to create such land banks within protected areas, within reserve forests, and outside also. But we have seen that most of the sites are within reserve forest areas because it's a state controlled ma managed forest. <coughs> Though they are trustee of the forest, uh, but because of this uh, lack of knowledge or maybe communication between the scientists and all. <coughs> so maybe you can throw some light. Like, do you think this compost afforestation actually doing more damage? Because you are targeting those landscapes in Central India, which are actually historically dry deciduous scrub land. All the fauna we see there, they are evolved in such a way. Caracal, for example, or many uh, cat or uh, deer species. 
So is this afforestation <laughs> like compost afforestation actually, you know, it's a glorified plantation, it focuses entirely on the canopy. And uh, why <laughs> is this so? Like, why are not, we are not learning from it? Like, you know, we have to sometime like, educate. Like, <laughs> so I just want to... As, up, uh, as you suggested, uh, you know, law is a double-edged sword. You can use it either way, yeah. right? Cut the throat or cut the grass. But I tell you, very interestingly, uh, you brought uh, degrade, uh, term degraded forest. It is in the rules. It is in the rules. I tell you, so far, recently I was called in one of the estate head of, by the head of the forest. And all forest officers sat down and uh, spoke. How to identify a degraded forest? Nobody knows. Top down, bottom up, how you identify? You don't know. There is no rule so far. There is no prescribed format how to identify degraded forest. So how you are identifying degraded forest? It means you are not identifying. Any forest is degraded forest. And every forest is degraded forest. In that, um, I remember in 2016, Times of India has written one beautiful article. And there, they had mentioned a place called Deoghar in Odisha. <coughs> And uh, she, that, uh, what is her name, that girl? She has, uh, I forgot, now he's in, uh, she is in Hindustan Times. So, Jai Shri. she has done beautiful story where she said that how compensatory plantation being done uh, in tribal areas and where ground clearing is being done, all climbers are being removed and plantation of teak being carried out. So, all the... Uh, neighborhood communities reacted badly to the government and forest department says, no, we are just cleaning for plantation. So the understanding of plantation itself very difficult. When you look at the rule for forest conservation, for afforestation rule, CAMPA, CA, what they call it, CA, it says, we are fighting, it's still fighting. They says <coughs> per hectare 1,000 tree. And we are fighting very strongly with the forest department. That who are you to decide? 1,000 tree per hectare cannot be an ecosystem. Again, you are going for afforestation without any use. So therefore, we suggested, we have given a written statement and recent document to them. We suggested that we must see per hectare at least 2,500 to 3,000 vegetation, which include top canopy, middle story. These are two tree level and then understory and ground vegetation. But still, they didn't agree. But we have to keep fighting. So that is one of the biggest <laughs> flaws in this uh, plantation scheme, where government sees that tree is the only species to be planted without understanding that when you look at the carbon sequestration, grassland are playing very, very important role. As I said, that all gray area is not bad. And therefore, in recent past, you see how Ladakh is suffering. Now that grain, great three idiot movie hero is sleeping since last many years or house, house arrest. Just for this reason, they are losing water because you are going for massive plantation in a dry area where enough water is not available. Low water and you are putting lot of pump in terms of trees. So those pumps are taking up water in forms of evapotranspiration. You are losing water very fast. So we need to understand that how much tree, which species, the, as I said, you need to find out ecological history of the area before you intervene. Until unless you look at it, we are doing disaster. Instead of cure, curing a disease, you are bringing many, many, many difficult diseases which cannot be cured. So this is one of the aspects which need to be seen. Not only that, when you bring exotic species, <laughs> many such species which is not of that area, then as I said, soil genesis reduces. You have thin soil on Himalayan area. Recently, I was in Pithodagar, and I have seen the way fragile Himalayas, what is happening. Uh, now, I am forbidden to speak about it. But you see, look at it. Until unless you look at this aspect that those gray area is not bad, you cannot understand. Because third desert, you have a small groups. If you see, for example, Caparis decidua, it is Caparis is teat, teat, uska achar khate hai. Teat has its role to play. But see, no, 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 it is not good. Bring big trees. Where is water to sustain that tree? Even though you bring tree, after some time, soil moisture will decrease so much that even ground, all ground vegetation like Caparis decidua will go and other species will go, die. Even calotropis cannot grow. What you will do? 
So these understanding need to be brought in in this entire what you call <laughs> CA program. And uh, uh, I don't know one one issue is very important to see that uh, uh, as you said legally uh, campuses under Forest Conservation Act uh, 1980 that land for land and tree for tree. It never says anything else tree for tree, right? But it it doesn't say that you go to other state. In recent past. This is a new trend which is going to create further problem because uh, we, we have uh, aspects with green glass and we try to see that every piece of land should be green and a time will come that we would be in great trouble because there are many protected areas where trees are being cut to see that how grassland comes up. Everywhere you don't have elephant, they are natural forester of the forest which pull down trees and creates open space for the grasses. But people are clearing. For example, you will see Bisanpura meadow in Kanha National Park. I worked for a longer period of time. <laughs> and the way rigorously we manage the grassland, now Bombex Siva, Legastomia pariflora, Butia monosperma, they are spreading into the grassland. Because one thing I'd like to share that we don't have natural grassland. Largely, we have cultural grassland, what you call as cultural grassland. What do you mean by it? You remove villages, intervene a lot, then you create grassland and you cannot sustain it. Now a lot of BD species is going inside the grassland and killing those grassland. And our management practice become very important to understand that A, we have one trouser and we have four brothers and we are wearing same trouser for everywhere. We are working in moist deciduous forest in or in Tarai forest in Dudwa. The way we are burning there, the same fire regime we are trying to create in Kuno National Park. How it will work? It won't work. It will kill entire microbial flora. Mind it, in forestry practices, until and unless you look at the microbial flora of soil, you are out, you are dead. You are not going to create a complex ecosystem. Obviously, sir. And uh, there is one story, like, no story, this news that uh, there is a thing called Oran in Rajasthan. Oh, yes. So it is like <coughs> traditionally they manage the orans as a like community land. And pasture land. land. It's, a, yeah, it's a habitat of getting busted. And we don't know why busted has been extinct. One of the reasons might be like loss of the grasslands habitat elsewhere. Characteristic grassland. But now in the Supreme Court, there are people who are fighting the case. And the uh, government said that they will declare the uh, this uh, orans as a deemed forest. Deemed forest means it will come under the ambit of the forest laws. Mm. But the concern here is like if you want to <coughs> do any big development activity, like we're already going on about solar and uh, wind energy, which is like the whole Rajasthan Gujarat belt. Mm. So when we divert land from this deemed forest, which is Oran, <coughs> and when we give, uh, like when we uh, ask for compensatory afforestation, will they plant trees or will they plant grasses? <laughs> this we <laughs> don't know, but this is actually going to affect both the ways. You are destroying the habitat, you are destroying the habitat other way also, where you are planting the trees. Yes. So, do you have any uh, any example you know where the compensatory afforestation has actually respected this uh, ecosystem approach, where grassland has been planted for grassland? Or we are looking at the space. Even Yamuna floodplain is now ready. Actually, I shown that photograph that how uh, two species of sankras, uh, sacrum, and then impreta, uh, vitivaria plays very important role, and how we recovered population, a small population of what you call hog deer. So if you kill that basic grassland, floodplain grassland, and you bring many trees everywhere, then probably, in a, especially in active flood zone, then you are going to create serious problem. And uh, there is no land. So every land should be green land in terms of trees. So, so sir, uh, my next question <coughs> is, which is uh, continuing this thing. No, I think this uh, issue, like we have fairly like good understanding of this issue. It's mm -hmm. not the bureaucrats that don't understand this. It's not the minister don't understand. Now we have an environment minister who is like he actually an environmentalist. <coughs> and most of the forest officers, they are <coughs> IFS. Like they're supposed to go on through all the trainings and all this thing. So is there a short sightedness <coughs> or a pressure from some system that, you know, uh, like all this is just ignorance or laziness or is actually like, what is the problem that we're not <coughs> able to like change this system of uh, like you know eco restoration of uh, forest because we are just planting trees. It is, I, I give you. Uh, I will start with an example that last to last Sunday I walked from Wazirabad to Old Delhi Bridge, 
with my friends about covering about 10 kilometers. I, ha I have seen that plantation was going on. And uh, I don't want to mention the name of department, but uh, there was not a single official or a staff from the department was overseeing that plantation. And when I asked, sir, aap kone? he said, I'm a contractor. So mm, what are you doing? So there were only two species of plants. There were Arjun and Jamun were planted. And uh, they were planted in a way that they were cutting down the bottom of pl plastic bag. And they are putting inside thing where plastic was in the side. Well, sir, why you are not removing it? He said, sir, isko remove karenge, pani kaas denge, dry ho jayega. So <laughs> everybody is aware. But nobody has time to see, oversee. Because as I said, that ecology is a science of interaction. Sitting in room, if you'll try to become Professor Babu, then it will be very difficult. You have to spend every day longer period of time to understand that ecosystem. Only then you can intervene. An official, what you call order, cannot bring sustainability to the forest. And ultimately, any city, city like Delhi, if you don't do it, then bringing environmental sustainability and resilience would be very, very difficult. So it is, my, in my opinion, <laughs> uh, they don't have time, in fact. Mm -hmm. And the lower bottom, bottom officials, staff, are not trained enough. Or they have different objectives. For, for example, now Kampa has 8,000 some rupees per plant for seven years. Right? So for seven years, 8,000 something rupees. So 8,000 also is a good sum. Right? And if you have, if you are planting 20,000 sapling, so now you look at the amount. So there's actually, if we need to, uh, what do you call, uh, speak with lower officials, forest guards, foresters, and range officers. And if we find some solution, solution will come through them. I'm sorry to say, if senior officials are sitting there, forgive me. But this is the answer I find over a period of time, because you are, you are you have everything except forestry because you are you have so many paperwork you are doing many things in your office hardly you find time to go in the field so sir you mentioned wi so i just want to ask you the institutions have a very great role in like you know guiding the country the political leaders the bureaucrats everywhere and we have several <coughs> government institutions like wi wi of india is there fri forest institute is there which is supposed to, like, you know, help. And there are universities as well. They're very good universities, like BHU and their university. They are known for, uh, like, you know, NCBS in Bengaluru. So there are many government institutions, universities, and, like, they are working. Uh, they are supposed to, like, work on this thing. And they are working. They are doing a very good job. But this is, like, what I have uh, felt, and maybe many of you will agree with this. That do you think institutions work in very silos? Like, scientists are not taking the effort to communicate, to engage with the policymakers. And there should be some communication. And if is it the hostility <coughs> from the bureaucrats or the, from the government like system, or is it the scientists that don't want to go? Like, what is the thing? Like, in your experience, what is the thing? Both the way, both the yeah. way, both the way. You see, I I I won't shy speaking that knowledge arrogance of academician and power arrogance are bureaucrats are not married together, and uh, that is one of the unfortunate part. And most of the time, most of the scientists are busy in publishing paper. And uh, there are very few C.R. Babu uh, who published paper, but he thinks that practical model must be brought to the nation for constructed wetland system or ecological restoration pattern. I, before coming to this site, I spoke to him that, uh, how do you see a forest? He said, I'll speak to you later. Because he was asked to give one definition, which was probably he has given also at that time, what is forest? <laughs> Problem is that when I was doing my master's in the Department of Environmental Biology, created by Professor C. R. Babu, he came out with the name of the department, you see, Environmental Biology, only talking about biological aspect of environment, nothing else. And there were 72 faculty members. There were no room to sit there. There were only five seats available, uh, all India basis. And there were 70 faculty members from ministry to everywhere. And we had learning. Now, that department has become Department of Environmental Studies, very good, balanced faculty members, a lot of papers. But neither a student, even a student are not willing to go to field. <coughs> they are more going for molecular biology because quickly it gives paper. In three months, we have one paper. Because the grading system is such, if you want to become assistant professor, you need to have such and such paper. 
then associate professor and then professor when you come out from the room after retirement as a professor and you ask that why you came why nature brought you on this earth you have no answer then you smile and go to river yamuna to see the dirty water right so the, i am sorry uh, my uh, very senior person is sitting here um, professor sabitri singh and uh, well known <coughs> Uh, he, she is very involved in wildlife and probably a student of Professor Babu, one of the students of Professor Babu. And the passion, uh, you need to bring a passion and passion comes through his what called teacher. <laughs> so I, I tell you, I'm sorry, but I tell you, a development is essential that you must see that whether that development is coming between your air and water, which you cannot produce. So please see, these two, two, two elements of environment is very, very important. Everybody should fight. How much plant, where to plant, grass plant, tree plant, you bring to the two elements of life. That's all. I completely agree with you, sir. But th there is one more uh, <coughs> thing I just want to comment. Chodo on that. No, no. Ah. First, last question. Uske pehle, I just want to make a small comment. Yes. So I am also, I am also a student of environmental science and uh, I studied zoology. But we were always <coughs> taught to like, you know, study for higher studies. Like when we were doing the so you have to do MSc, you have to do PhD, karna hai. so in this law also, like when, uh, you're sitting here, lawyers also are taught to be either you have to go to integration or you have to do in law firm. So we are not like taught in a way that, you know, there is also a world beyond your lab, like you have to also go beyond, there's a responsibility to <coughs> society also. This is what I think is some fair education system I also. I suffered the same way. Yeah. My father is a retired professor, psychology professor. When I started doing all these fighting, etc., court, etc., my father was upset. Yeah that you want to work in the forest, you become IFS. And when first time I, I was seen, when I was fighting a case in Central Board Committee for Okla, first time I was shown on a hashtag. So one of my Hindi teacher, Bibhuti Narayan, I remember, called my father because he was a student of my father. Sir, your son, I can see your son on TV. Array, he's doing nothing, only fighting, what is this? A professor thought in this way, very learned professor, I tell you, he knows psychology like anything, but, this is the understanding that I need a son. Son should grow, get a position, get married, two kids, one house, a small car, done. Life is over. So young people are here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, sir, I have just one <coughs> suggestion to you. If you can like, uh, so in the higher studies, when you're studying environmental science or biology, <coughs> you should actually try to uh, give them good faculty to retain them about the yes. policy and legal aspects. Yes. Because now yes. change will happen only when you intervene mm. at the yes. law and policy level. Yes. Otherwise, the research will be like, you know. No, I agree with you. everyone is like you. you are I agree. I remember <laughs> I was, I, I, I won't bring any department. One department of Delhi University asked me to taught what, you know, environmental education. Uh, that was environmental communication and education. Yeah how you communicate. Uh, so one year I have given opportunity and uh, a student was very convinced. So half of the student came to me for dissertation. Now I'm no more teaching. So sir, uh, <laughs> <coughs> before you open the discussion for the audience, I have one <laughs> last uh, question for you. Yes. Uh, this is my answer in whatever way you want. So what is, you have actually answered most of it, but if you want to add something towards it, that this is the one thing like which you, which you think should be the major overhaul in the system, whole framework. <laughs> rip off, rip off. Like to... <laughs> Aray, then I have to win the election. <laughs> I get majority yeah, so in parliament. I'll do it. I'll do it. Otherwise, you see, I, uh, what George Scheller says, I will just repeat it. You must be knowing George Scheller, who brought Deer and Tiger, the first scientific book on wildlife biology in India. George Scheller suggested that now we have done enough science. Please convince our estate head that if you are protecting this forest and grassland, you are getting so much of money in. Or as a democratic country, every individual has vote. While before giving vote, you ask your person who came here for vote that I need such and such thing before I'll vote. Don't ask hospital and road only. Please ask your life. So actually, individual cannot do it. We are not never asking for what is required. We are, or we are not informed. We are not well informed. Therefore, government is not taking informed decision. Or is, what is informed decision? When you research something, then you come out with something, and then government takes decision. So you are not asking. 
So they are not giving. It's as simple, as simple as I see. <laughs> so he always speaks his mind. He's one of the most fearless scientists I know. I'm sorry, tomorrow I don't know. Firstly, <laughs> 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 he wanted to live long and uh, inspire people. So now we open it for uh, <coughs> any questions or like remarks you want even on you. Yeah, Mr. Anand Banerjee. Oh. Hey, thank you. Uh, great seeing you after so many years and hearing you. Just, uh, just a request, more of a qu not a question. Uh, if you can expand on your the, the, the time you have spoken about time and your experience of bringing back uh, ecosystem because there are a lot of young people here. <coughs> the, the time uh, because in the age of instant gratification and you know PTM sending money instantly, the time required <coughs> to yes. bring back a yes. Actually, we worked on it. I tell you, there are there are two important things which we have worked on under the supervision of legendary ecologist Professor C R Babu, where I have seen that when you try to transplant a tree, so during Commonwealth game, we personally, I personally drove a head of a truck carrying tree, not from anywhere, from Delhi University, which is the rugby, what do you call a stadium now, and bringing it to the park and experimenting that whether it will survive or not, 100 years, 50 years, 10 years, 5 years. And we came out with a solution that tree less than 10 years can be transplanted. If you plant tree, any tree above 10 years, they will survive without hand, without leg. They have four plants which cannot which cannot be giving you any ecological goods and services. As far as ecosystem restoration is concerned, time is very important. Therefore, the model we came out with, what we call as biodiversity park model, where we bring assemblage of species to reduce succession. Succession plays a very important role <laughs> in ecology. And therefore, if you give uh, time to succession, I don't know, 40,000 years for Corbett, or I don't know how many years for Kuno, has taken. But in Barasti Park model, we try to see that how some of the ecological services comes within seven years or eight years. And their assemblage of species become very important. And that is that varies from site to site. If it is Aravali hill ranges, then we see different. And if it is Yamuna, we see different. So that is the way you manage time. <laughs> yes, madam. <coughs> <coughs> You talked about the uh, ecological system restoration. So I think you said about cross plantation plus every uh, the whole system, as in the basically the intersection of uh, biodiversity, <coughs> the species, uh, <coughs> the plant name, the uh, <coughs> cross plantation, and also like how do you manage to do research, as in how uh, how much place you have to occupy to research on. And is that place also connected to the whole country or the whole geography? Or by the way, like uh, if uh, you know how how do they uh, manage to intersect or coordinate with each other so that you <laughs> form a good system and that doesn't affect uh, the other nearby areas or something? So we can can we say this that if the research becomes too difficult, so we can take environment in a spiritual sense that just being would be very good. Uh, I agree with you, madam. Do you have any more question? Then I'll reply. No. Please sit. <coughs> you, I agree with you. But what you said and what I perceived that initial forest officer, one of the forest officer who might have got Padam Bhushan, so has suggested a lock and key system. Still, it is continuing in the department. So, with a lock and key system in a dynamic system, because forest is a dynamic system which changes every day. Every day you go, you have a new thing to see. So therefore, as you said, something that you be there and you respect or whatever, but you have to monitor. It is very important to see that how your system is behaving. Most of the natural system, when you look at the ground flora, which has gone. You traveled from Gwalior to Shippuri. You look at the Ghati Gaon bird san uh, busted sanctuary. You go to Karera. You please visit. I have seen recently, I spoke to PCCF and he was amazed that how could I know? You will surprise to know that Dacro Stachis <coughs> is competing with Acacia Katichu. And his own forest officer was not known about it. So therefore, monitoring is very important. It is not complicated. So therefore, we are trying to come out with some courses for practitioner. 
for example you can become very good practitioner you visit us you, you visit us you get email id you get time please visit us okay. in 10 days you will learn something to be implemented in the field madam <laughs> yes <please. coughs> so so one thing, uh, ask questions from Mike and also mention your name. Okay, uh, good evening. My name is Samad. So, first of all, a big thank you, Faz, sir, for doing all you do. I've been coming to you since, you know, early childhood, I can say. So, uh, my question comes uh, with a little bit of background, looking at the way the carbons are being traded. Right? The carbon has become another commodity, a much demanded commodity in the market. So, uh, talking about carbon brings us very closely to the climate change. And there are literally companies doing many things, not ecologists, companies, you know, talking about mitigation and adaptations. So my question uh, very particularly focuses on that whether these ecological restoration sites contribute in adding to the climate resilience of a local climate. So what we're looking at the changes, if you look at the summer, it was always a heat wave. In winter, it is always a cold wave. In monsoon, it's already a flood wave, <laughs> if we can say it's already flooding. So can these restoration areas, apart from looking at the biodiversity, <coughs> local livelihoods, can contribute in minimizing the impacts uh, that we may see? <coughs> Yes, you uh, wonderfully you put. Actually, we have uh, started working on it, looking at the ecosystem services. Recently, we did a small uh, study with IIT Kanpur, and we have seen when uh, air quality index was more than uh, 500 at Jahangir Puri, Yamunavasti Park has less than 200. That is one of the recently now we are working, working with Niri. We have just uh, started, and soon we will come out with a big uh, result to show it. Not only that, actually, through questionnaire survey, we did uh, a, across Yamuna Basti Park, looking at Jagatpur, Sangam, Bihar, those villages. Mm -hmm. And some of very interesting data came. And people suggested that earlier during month of May, they were putting extra pipe to their bore well, which is now over. They are not doing it because we have many restored wetland there. And uh, when they were washing white cloth, they were getting yellow after some time. That issue has also gone. It means that quality and quantity both has uh, came up very well. <laughs> it is well known thought when you reach to any park, the leaf litter plays very, very important role as far as carbon sequestration is concerned. You go to any park, Barasti Park, you come to Yamuna, it's just in front of office you will see. Today, I am, why I am telling, today I dig from my hand and show it to um, school children who visited it. Uh, they had the similar question, carbon sequestration. So I dig take out and shown it is carbon is permanently fixed place C. So it is being done. There is no doubt in it. It is being done because the forest is, when you look at the how forest community get established, only then you will understand there are five, four, five, five, six factors which make you to understand that how you, how you see diversity, how you look at the succession, how you look at the energy inputs of that forest. Only then you will understand that how system functions. So therefore, these biosphere park are very functional entity in terms of adaptation and climate resilience. Why I'm telling you, when outside Delhi, you come in the month of May, June, when everything is dry, the trees are very happy in the park. Not only that, the migratory bus density when goes down, entire northern area this year, migratory bus density is very poor. You will come and see that Barsti Park is doing excellent in this town. Most of these species are there, including ferruginous pochard and restricted pochard. So what it suggests? These are the indicators suggesting. Some of the species coming back, like sea baldy snake, came back after 70 years. Hog deer came back. So uh, we have recorded uh, one uh, spotted deer in Tilpat Valley Biosity Park, very recently. So that way, <coughs> it is coming up. Yeah? <coughs> Yes, sir. Sir, my name is Shekhar and I'm doing PhD in JNU in uh, innovation and frugality. My, what, uh, what, what? Innovation and frugality, frugal innovation. Okay. okay. So, <coughs> in informal economy. My question is a little different from environment. I mean, in re recent paper, I, we had reached to a argument that the government need to prioritize people's want while framing uh, policies. So, the example which we were using, the government had brought a, brought in a solar rickshaw, solar cycle rickshaw, and we were comparing with e-rickshaw. The e-rickshaw e was formalized while solar rickshaw couldn't take forward, but despite it was environmental friendly technology. I mean, if we consider battery vehicle as environment friendly. So, 
my question to you is so in this context that government need to prioritize people's want in the overall objectives <coughs> so how do you see that we need electricity we need resources and uh, eventually they come from the natural resources only so how do you see this paradox and how do we really frame policies that we could negotiate wants as well as our overall broader objective of environment sustainability etc actually i was just giving you a quick example because i am going through a report and i have seen that some of the company is going to produce electricity in jharkhand <coughs> utilizing resource from jharkhand and those electricity will be sold in bangladesh that is one of the model right so you need to see that how much you need i am not against development i time and again i am telling how much you need and that need is that need is above air and water we need to prioritize close 2 minutes gone you see it broad road from the heaven so therefore or hell i don't know hell probably will go to hell the way we have <laughs> will go to hell so sir my only request since you are researcher you everybody ask this question now how much there should be some limit no how much and that limit should not cross air and water limit because that is the ultimate you will go up to this place you will if you cross it we are fresh then development will be for home so that we need to understand that is only my argument that's all that's so what about soil ha ji uh, air water and also mud and soil basically uh, <coughs> bachoge tab to bachao bataoge soil kaise bachega aapko bachna hoga so i have one request if you have any question please raise <coughs> your hand the mic will come then speak because we are recording and also it maintains that so after him then him yeah please mention uh, your name and Hello, sir. Um, my name is Ritwik Ghosh. I am actually a, a postdoctoral fellow in the U.S. in Arizona State University, and I've been spending the last two, three, four months almost going from a camp up plantation to camp up plantation in the country, learning about some of the local practices. Um, but and I, I think the question builds on what uh, you so share your experience first. I mean, that will take a long time. <laughs> take through two minutes. But one minutes. thing I'll I'll ask mm -hmm. is is the pro process of policy implementation um, lends itself to simplification. They want numbers, they want rules, they want accountability mechanisms, <coughs> um, and maybe. And the question then is, have they learned anything from the restoration science process and science that has been going on for the many years? And you know, you've elaborated on. um the one thing people cite as uh, important development is this idea of assisted natural regeneration which is now written into the campa <coughs> rules also um and it is a move away from just planting trees and uh, i wanted to take your thoughts on this specific idea of assisted natural regeneration is it is it progress in the front of doing more um restoration based approaches to developing plantations or is it also just feeding back into that kind of simplistic way of creating and planting trees where you will do where you expect regeneration where you have root stock isn't it mr ghosh you go to degraded forest area where you expect regeneration but a place where there is nothing which has been killed 200 years ago so regeneration may take i don't know 10 life of mine it don't come so there you intervene through ecological restoration but yes i agree with you any forested area any degraded forest we should wait for regeneration and for it you need to facilitate regeneration how you will facilitate one thing is very interesting as you raised and you are such a you need to see that how land degrade you have a forest grazing starts another biotic pressure comes it becomes shrub land is still that biotic pressure continue it become <coughs> grassland is still that biotic pressure continue it become a degraded land so when if you wait till the grassland goes away then probably recovery will take lot of time and if you have if you have so much of time and money then wonderful there is no problem it's the best way but in the mo the moment you try to intervene in a site which you try to see regeneration you must see the root stock and for which you need to have proper understanding that how you see that forest is degraded or not the similar way i see identifying wetland becoming very difficult whether it is a wetland or not 
how you will identify so similarly how you will identify that it's a degraded forest right so that is very important to see in forest area i agree with you 100% we should wait for regeneration but you need to support that regeneration by removing most of the biotic pressure for certain period of time only then you will achieve regeneration otherwise one will sprout browsed and grazed so you have to see that so actually <coughs> actually please, please <coughs> just a minute we also want to give chance to everyone so we will come to you Uh, my name is Manvendra. We have been working with like being a ecosystem approach to conventional afforestation in places. <coughs> so we have I have two questions. One thing is the challenge we are facing is that you know whenever we uh, try to include climate species in our plantations, because usually when we are trying to come up with an 80 species list in our woodland in conventional woodland area, uh, you know the clients are always uh, very stuck that you know it has to be fast growing. You know, it has to be pioneering, and you know, if you're especially doing it in a place where it's required as a mandate by the law, they say that no, the slowly growing species won't clear the <coughs> the norms. <coughs> so, is there actually a law that says that you know you you should be planting only pioneer species, but you can't plant slow growing climate species over there? Uh, so, therefore, that's why we are arguing that if the CA is not going in the right direction, exactly, because uh, <coughs> forest community cannot be created through only fast. so called fast growing plant how you do it you need as i say, said you need to look at the ecological history of the site exactly. and you try to find out reference ecosystem closest reference ecosystem only then you approach in which you have slow growing fast growing medium growing grasses shrub herbs you have to bring everything so plantation if you go for plantation <laughs> in as term suggest it will be kind of a forestation which has minimum possible ecological services one side suggested that not less than 2500 in this vegetation top canopy middle story understand ground vegetation you keep writing whatever you do but we'll do like this you agree or not agree so you have to be rigid as you said term client itself client itself become very big term in terms of money you know then client is client you are earning something he they are earning something so th- uh, when earning comes ecosystem get trapped into it unfortunately so you have to be little cautious yes, i just want to comment <coughs> on that like what you were saying i think what you were saying in my own experience i won't mention the forest range last time i said and you said okay catch <laughs> <laughs> i won't mention the forest range name because last time i mentioned some sanctuary name and you said that we should <laughs> avoid speaking <laughs> so this is somewhere eastern up so you many of you will understand where so uh, it was a real thing that <coughs> i was sitting with a dfo and it was must be around 2018 or 19 officer boy dfo is mat boy theek hai first of all dfo ha dfo first week of year dfo ke baad kya hai so and there was a something uh, cm was akhilesh yadav and he announced that we want to plant <coughs> some are cm bhi bol diya so it came like theek hai you said you want to speak so, yes please uh, so he announced that you know we will uh, have the guinness book of world record of planting trees We yes. plant some two twenty crore something trees. I remember. What happens in bureaucracy? The footer. The notification comes on this day. We have to plant this number of trees. The DFO is sitting in his office. He has eight to twelve ranges to manage. He forwards this letter to range officers. This has come from CM. Everyone wants to count some brownie points. See, I have put range mix. I have put ranger. Ask the forester. Go on the beat. Me. How many plants are there? The truck comes. So they have to do the work, and they do in a very Herculean way. Like you know, one a week in the pool, cut, 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 jungle in the middle. The 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 issue is, it comes to the land. It's a forest. It's government owned land. Degraded to every degraded. You have said that all forests are degraded. Any forest is degraded. So they have to go to the jungle. Now I have seen places where black bus used to be there. Yes. Chinkara used to be there. Now there are small populous chinkara. Black bus completely extinct. <coughs> extinct. There's no one single single black jungle. Chow Singha is completely extinct from that place. Because that plantation, it is like up five six years later on. This is the problem. So it happens from the. No, in natural system also, uh, Debu, it happens. Uh, yeah. I give you example of Kuno. That is best example. It is close to my heart. When I was uh, studying, at that time itself, there were two a small population of black buck which we have lost in succession. Tall grasses, thameda, apluda, killed. Agriculture field converted into woodland. Where acacia, lucco, floya, jasper, nimularia, many other species came. Vitex, done. All gone. recently i visited before that big cat came from outside i visited in january to see that i was called to see i went there to see i have seen that it was difficult to see chinkara even so it is gone in succession even a natural system if you want to manage grassland because as i said that indian grassland or cultural grassland you have to manage it intervene 
if you lose it grassland are not highly productive ecosystem as far as productivity is concerned primary product. so what happens the moment you leave it tree comes in die grasses dies lot of manuring to the soil trees comes in so you have to see in a system where which agriculture field has become grassland yeah, yeah. <coughs> so I will come to it on because we have <coughs> given. Can I just have one more question after this? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so, because both of you have litigation background, uh, so where I live, I think you have been there. So, where I live in Champavat, what they started doing is they started putting up a big, very big highway through the mountains in the Uttarakhand, and uh, they are planting uh, next to the highway uh, American wattle, which is again an exotic species, which is going to again take <coughs> over the. And be a threat to the local biodiversity, and the local forest officers they are not taking the responsible for responsibility for it because it's not under their jurisdiction. So, uh, is there a like under the law? Is there a way that we can challenge uh, the government for harming our own biodiversity? You have to convince that, as I said, all green is not good, because when you stand in Masuri, and then you see there are dune. And then you ask institute working there, two three big institute, how much water they are getting? They will say that how they are converting to something else in succession. We have converted. You understand what I mean? So therefore, not easy, sir. Not easy. So there was question from this thing. <coughs> Green, how Sir, my name is Bhivash Nag. I'm an eco agriculturalist. You are talking about grassland. Yes. So I want to know what is your view regarding the plantation or whatever forestation of vetiver for eco restoration in India, and <coughs> how it can be done. देखिए आसान बड़ा लगा लेकिन है आसान नहीं जवाब देना. I tell you how you see vetiveria itself. Vetiveria actually loves flat plain areas. So therefore, if you look at vitivaria, historical perspective that vitivaria was there, then you bring vitivaria, there is no problem. Vitivaria alone might not be bringing that functional ecosystem. Vitivaria along with impreta, which is also in Delhi region I am talking about, there are various type of grassland across the country. So in Delhi region, if you bring vitivaria, <laughs> what you call sacrum spontaneum and impreta together, so it will bring beautiful in flood pain, which exists already through survey we find, then it will work well. But if you bring alone what you call monoculture of trees, similarly vitivaria will work. Because grass has a role to play. It is not only foliage and seeds for birds and grazing material. It has a huge root system. And these roots have beautiful what you call fungus. And one of the fungus is Arbuscular mycorrhiza. When you look at fungus, they dance through mycelium in fact. And those mycelium start ecological processing. And therefore, if you are a single species, then probably you are disturbing microbial flora. <coughs> yeah, please. Then I will come to you. Yeah. <coughs> she is waiting for long. No, on the mic. On the mic, please. Mic. Mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Madam, what is your background? Uh, journalism and economics honors. Uh, yes, please. So uh, you were saying that we need air and water, but uh, we also, uh, when we say that, uh, I just read in the first slide that uh, deserts, uh, they, de they cannot be confused with degraded land since they are sand uh, and they are not soil. So what makes sand a soil is the water content, right? And the humus and the water content. Mm -hmm. Sand to soil is always a water content. So um, basically, to sustain life, we have scarcity of water in the deserts. Camels need less water. Those are about diversity of the deserts. So we cannot confuse them with degraded lands as such. But life is not uh, human life. For that, we need sufficient crops and sufficient soil and sufficient water. So can't we call it soil? Because I'm in Isha Foundation, and they also support safe soil. Uh, yes, madam. Please sit. I uh, actually I must tell you that uh, as you said your name is Drut. What you say? Huh? Torita is such a fast name. Torit. So <laughs> even you run fast, very fast, uh, you cannot bring soil to the sand. I, I as I said, if you bring trees to the sand, then further you are degrading that sand. Today that sand is supporting something beautiful, a spiny tail lizard. 
Yes, it is integral part. I am saying that plantation yes, begins soil genesis. I, I told that. That is the ultimate objective of ecological restoration. It is not plantation alone. Yeah, I, I told that. Yes, Next madam. <coughs> I will come to you. <coughs> Hello. Uh, Hello, Dr. Fayaz. Uh, I had a quick question about CAMPA. I am not sure if it has been addressed earlier. So, you know, uh, common op opinion among journalists and lawyers seems to be that the way CAMPA funds are managed and uh, audited, the implementation of uh, compensatory afforestation under CAMPA is basically a scandal. <laughs> and uh, there has been, this is now a widely accepted view. In this context, do you think there is any concrete regulatory change that can be done for this? So in terms of either it could be in the, in the form of guidelines or rules or auditing processes, is there a solution to this? Yes. I tell you, when you look at the National Highway Authority, they, they are the most popular institution go for CAMPA. Why they go, you all know. So, when I come across with the, what do you call, people who come for looking at the plantation, they are all engineers, all, 100%. They only see that how much you, are you cow dung? You put water in it. The tree should grow more. It's very small. So, the team which has been created by whom, whosoever, these are legal things, I cannot speak. We need to see that people who are involved in this field must be brought into it. That itself will bring regulation. If you are, a, as said, a client says, when I'll go, I'll ask his client that why you have not planted such and such tree? Why you brought only fast growing? What that American plant, why you brought? Who will ask? Sir, I cannot, I, I don't know, I don't know, but I have me, I met quite frequently. <laughs> no, they are government officials, they are from institution. I am not criticizing them. Actually, since they are part of National Highway Authority, some way, some committees and something, so that way they have been interested to see, are jo NHI ka podha lag usko bhi dekh lijiye. So that way, I am not criticizing them. So regulation comes through knowledge. And how it will come? As I always say, informed decision need to be taken. And who will take that decision? Who knows about the town? Uh, please, please, on, on the mic, please, on the mic. We are recording. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I won't uh, continue on this, but my specific question was, is there sp some scope for specific changes in the yes, Act? Yes. In the CAMPA Act, what is it that can be done for ensuring the auditing is more transparent and more effective? Because right now, that's the biggest problem, right? Nobody knows where the co compensated... Compensatory, compensatory afforestation has happened. I, I give you one example. Say, just I will take few seconds. One fellow has filed uh, one RTI in National Highway Authority. Mm -hmm. And then it went, uh, he ke kept writing many RTI that where you have planted for such and such merit road. Some mm -hmm. Those plantations were carried out in Tolaka Barasti Park, which I look after. After long fight, after one year or so, somebody suggested him that please write to Professor Babu or Fayaz. So he written one email to Professor Babu. Professor Babu has given my number. That ask him on convenient date and time and go and visit the site, you will see trees. And when we, he came, he started crying that this is the truth, it happens. And in this way, because nobody is convinced that plantation can be done in Kampa. But there are some organizations, they might be doing, I am no, not going to criticize anybody. But yes, when government system like reserve forest and protected forest comes, where monitoring becomes very, very difficult because you are the monitor, you are the judge. So there it becomes difficult. Yeah. Yes, please. Vijay. <laughs> so thank you, Fayaz, for a lovely talk. It's inspiring to hear you. Um, yeah, so I have seen Fayaz's work, wonderful work. It has been inspirational for me also. Um, I was looking at the topic, afforestation, reforestation, and eco-restoration <coughs> in India. It's a quite a big topic. and. Slowly the tide is turning, where people are looking at eco-restoration as something which is worth considering, and therefore investment has to be made in eco-restoration. And we know that this is the decade of eco-restoration, so to say. Things will improve, is the hope we all have. Um, unfortunately, there is also this reality of popular, populist ideas. 
and wanting to prove like we have a forest policy which says 33 percent forest no way we are going to go achieve that Impossible. that's very clear we uh, um, I mean we have finished <coughs> one target um, where 17 uh, percent we have covered or 21 percent we have covered and we are boasting about it but we have changed the nomenclature now today FSI data points for any kind of mapping vegetation mapping is coming in Vasant Kunj it's coming in uh, JNU it's coming in you know it can come in the central Delhi it you know and so one I think comment or question I mean I don't know whether it's a valid question but whom are we fooling second what do you think of this popular idea such as Miyawaki which has become so popular and has become a <coughs> become a you know uh, yeah uh, top gear for everything that's possible there's money to be made I remember interacting with people at least um, comparison would be about 100 times more money per square acre per acre yeah if you can look at it so and that is the trend because it's a popular idea it is catching up very fast and irrespective whether you plant Gulmohar, Jacaranda or what not you are just carrying on every state is doing it every forest department is doing it unfortunately these are forest department who plant who are supposed to be custodians of knowledge in the forestry uh, I would have also wanted you to look at the I, I have seen forest department at one point where they have they didn't know what they're doing you know they were lost because they were money-making unit now they were not money-making unit now they were asked to be custodian of something whereas they were there their civic culture practices was something that they were known for they were the sahabs in the whole bureaucracy <coughs> so please reflect and help us understand on this thank you it uh, you see there are two three aspects which you discussed I told that a news item came in 2016 which suggested that clearing ground forest cover in Deoghat, Odisha and bringing teak plantation so itself is it suggests that how we are looking at the commercial plantation and in most of the cases when you go for afforestation and reforestation these practices are very very frequent when you see one technique some technical term you brought actually as I said that in the case of afforestation and reforestation we never reach to a stage where you get 100% ecological goods and services from that system so sim similar thing happens with the system you are talking about it grows and grows high density plantation has given a name with high inputs as you said uh, it, it, it reaches to a stage where you get what you call green color to your eyes and uh, but the plant animal interaction which plays very vital role in an, an ecosystem to create a complex ecosystem provide some ecological goods and services that in fact you never achieve in such forest which I have seen so far if you have any idea because you are uh, moving around in the country um, I, I don't know if I can speak <laughs> I, I, I'm not I mean I can speak to the issue of uh, the monitoring part that you were saying and um, <coughs> you're right and so that the engineer type people are going and you know every state has a third party monitoring and, and so I'm know, not the only one who experienced um, so and the only the thing they check is the survivability. Is kitna survive bas, bas, bas. Um, Or every every plantation has a journal, and every journal में लिखा होता है कि last क्या हुआ है and updates from those engineers. Um, so I, I mean I, I don't know if I'm answering your question or following that comment. No, but just I thought that you will add because you are visiting many places as a researcher. Researcher are the only person who are working. I tell you. Mind it. You're on the mic, please. On the mic. Yeah. <coughs> um, uh, also to be blamed. Yes, they want quick solution, and the and the arguments are often kardo isko. Like Delhi Ridge, I went to one of the sites in Delhi Ridge. Nice caparis, uh, cyperia growing. You know, many other shrubs growing around there, and it was clear fell all of it for a plantation by oh. a judge. Of, of uh, what plant? 
you had Pilkhan, you had Arjun, you had Jamun, you had, you know, name it, everything was there. Judiciary often does this knee-jerk reaction, where uh, what they understand. Actually, uh, I, I just want to comment. Yes, thing. please. So, actually, you are quite right, because we are uh, doing research on forest laws, and we have seen often high courts, <coughs> like in case of Isha Foundation. In the judgment, he wrote that, uh, why are the, is the petitioner against the plantation? They are doing such a noble job, and uh, he used the term <coughs> forestation plantation interchangeably. You see now? You know. Green color? He used the term forestation and plantation interchangeably in the judgment. Like, you know, creating forest is such a good job. So now I wrote an article on that. You may read that. Like, why the judge was wrong to say the forest is, plantation is same as forest? <laughs> no, Debu, here I will react badly with legal fraternity. Because why you are blaming judge? I, I have seen judge. <laughs> Somebody is probably. Uh, Chief Justice Urisa High Court or somewhere in Jammu and Kashmir. We convinced them and they have given judgment. And for most, there are four or five judges from Delhi High Court. For any judgment on environment, they kept visiting us. Paya Saab, I'll have a cup of tea with you. And they have given judgment. So where we stand as a legal fraternity, why we are not studying? Why we are not going prepared to speak? Who are you to say that yes. uh, plant uh, afforestation is forest? Who are you? Because while arguing, during Asiatic land case, I have seen advocate from Gujarat arguing so vigorously to the judge that unnecessary lordship you are poking your nose, this is not your subject. Yes, so this is the way you need to speak. And when you speak in the court, honorable understands. Actually, sir, uh, it was an IAC only, uh, three, four years ago. There was a book launch, and Sham, Mr. Sham Diwan was sitting here, mm -hmm. and I was the audience. So he said, environmental law, the problem is we need specialized judge we need specialized <laughs> advocate to convince the court. We also need a specialized client to brief the advocate. When all things fall in line, then only you get a good judgment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Shandivan's word. So it's a very like, deep word. It's not a judge's, you can blame judge because judge will only give a judgment based on the argument. Many people will. So I remember I raised some issue. The collector was not ready to listen. You are talking something without looking at the site. And I already spoke to the audience, uh, to the committee, that we need to see, see sites before we plan anything about the site. So this is the scenario. And when IS officer trainees comes to us and forest officer trainees, I raise this issue that today you are saying, sir, tomorrow you become collector, you forget about environment. I think uh, we can take a couple of more questions before we close. Here. So I guess we one hand there. So, I mean, yes. my question, I mean, it's, I don't know whether, whether it's very relevant or not. Please, please. But uh, I, I do see a, a misconception about how do we understand nature among the urbanizers. Like, I see people go in a central Delhi and say, say, this is quite, quite na close to nature, trees are everywhere. And they call manicured spaces <coughs> as quite beautiful. So, how do you see, I mean, this terminologies. Also, I, I am also against the term climate change because it's not climate changing, it's we destructing the climate. So how do you see that our framing of terms, our understanding of nature and our understanding of environment through our languages impact these practices of restoration or afforestation, deforestation? I mean, in that respect. My God, it's a very, it sounds very simple, but it's a very difficult question you have raised, my dear. Actually, I see, you know, environment for urban center is visiting Corbett. Environment for urban center is going to center Delhi, as you suggested. And uh, I don't know, probably wearing green cloth, which I also a <laughs> lot of time wear and many times say that why you wear green cloth. It is, they are educated people, I tell you, highly educated people. <laughs> but they are not well informed. Education is something else. I, in my opinion, I'm sorry if somebody feel bad, please say you are speaking rubbish. This is one question. Yeah. Name also. Uh, my, my name is Naveen. I'm from WWF India. So my question is based on the pollination because we know there's no boundary for a bird and a bee. So let's take this question from there. Like uh, any institute or a, any building, when we plant trees in and around, we go for the good-looking trees, I'll say that. So, in terms of pollination, 
let's say if you are trying to eco restore a place but since the birds have no boundary <coughs> how do you see this plant uh, pollination is going there because you mentioned this uh, invasive species also so are we doing or let's say because people are promoting new species outside from india and now they all are planted in their spaces so let's say i have like 50 uh, it's a gamla of different uh, species. species. And the very nearest forest area is very good. Currently, it's, it's fertile and doing everything. But what are the chances that a bird can come and pollinate that same seed to some other areas? Not all, but yes, if this pollination is going, then there is like, I don't think there is a like, misbalance in that effort. Uh. You see, it's a very simple, in my understanding, it's very simple because when you s talk about pot, pot has its own limitation, therefore you are talking about largely ornamental plants. Yeah, right. ornamental plants. So ornamental plants cannot be co cross-pollinated with wild plants, which is in neighborhood forest. So I don't think there will be any harm. Okay. I don't think. But there might be a harm. Because if you have a lot of a specific potted plant in your vicinity of forest, the pollinator, characteristic of pollinator may change. A species, for example, you need <laughs> bees and butterflies, right. and probably butterflies dominates and bees get eliminated. Mm. That may be possible, which I don't know, I have not studied. That is one possibility I can yes. see, but there won't be any problem of cross-pollination. Okay. So, we'll take <coughs> two, two more questions, one from uh, Akash, because then Mr. Banerjee, <coughs> and then we will be after the session of this question. You know, humans are very greedy. Whatever they do, they think it's the right, it is the right. Look, how much water we require to take a bath? How much water we require to flush after a loo? And how much car do we have to travel? It doesn't look after that. We don't, don't care about the water and air at all. Everybody takes uh, you know, few hundred liters of water to bath, but a uh, gentleman in a, who is in the villages, they can bath with five and two seven liters of water. I'm in Jain, I'm touched. Uh, our parents teach from the day one, you know, about the values. We do, if we don't have values, you know, nothing will going to change. We, you know, we can use the resources as much as we want to use, but we don't want to see what effect it, it brings, you know, after a few years. You talk about the Yamuna. Why is such a polluted one? Because of us. And I don't think, you know, government can do anything at all till and then we doesn't, you know, take actions at our house. That's why, sir, I suggested, if you remember, that what we are doing, we are taking out our subsoil and deep aquifer from floodplain, putting in our plastic, what do you call, uh, dabbas, and taking it through our washroom and then putting it back to the river. That I already suggested. Yeah, you are right. We are the one. We are the only species we are working hard to kill ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I am Akash Vashish. Well, to begin then, I have two, uh, in fact, uh, reasons to cheer. One is that uh, uh, in one of the red petitions before the High Court uh, of Delhi, we have challenged single day or bulk plantations in a, in a single day. 35 lakh targets, bulk targets to be achieved in a single plantation season, invasive species, non-native, wherein we have demanded SIT investigation. Uh, into okay. whatever frauds have been played and uh, uh, the three three months back yeah. three months in fact they were in the very first admission uh, you know a day uh, there were arguments for more than half an hour and uh, in fact at last the high court uh, issued notices there are 14 respondents including delhi biodiversity council also oh. headed by <laughs> so that's one uh, and so the court is taking that today also that matter was listed at the council Divan Singh is a petitioner. So uh, in fact uh, it's uh, what I see it's trading in the right direction. One and secondly uh, to just address your concerns uh, uh, Mr. Khutsar, 
the NGT on uh, my petition uh, around a month back, it had issued country-wide directions that no public authority or no horticulture work in any public authority will be done by carried out by civil engineers holding BTEC and uh, so so <coughs> that's a country-wide direction. In fact, so engineers uh, I think will not have much role. Now my question is. Uh, that of course, uh, in fact, it's also related to one of my litigations and a series of litigations that have uh, been there. Uh, what can we really do about the concretization of urban landscapes, the protection of urban soils, number one? And then secondly, is uh, are there any uh, uh, cost benefit uh, studies, economic studies uh, to show, you know, uh, uh, demonstrate that ecosystem restoration has greater advantages over afforestation or reforestation. Very briefly, these are my concerns and questions. Thank you. You see, as, as far as concretization is concerned, I don't know, it is difficult to convince agencies and it should, can only uh, be possible through people like you. I don't see that uh, you can convince MCD and NDMC or anybody, any agency that uh, uh, how much, what do you call, concrete uh, needs to be brought on pedestrian place or wherever because we don't want to put our leg into mud so that is the problem even in my society itself no soil you will find road both side concrete and even plantation being done in uh, small areas so uh, values ki baat ki thi, that values is also needed for ourselves Second thing, as far as e ecological restoration concerned, I told you that we have started some study and uh, <coughs> uh, not only economic evaluation, but some of the other parameters we have taken with other agencies working together. So it will take another six to eight months. Uh, and it is convincing, very convincing, because some of the indicators suggest, for example, how the, what do you call, uh, many species have started reclaiming their historical geographical ranges. Why? For example, seabold snake disappeared 70 years ago, came back. Hog deer reported in 1834, gazetteer, why it came back? Uh, for example, black crown night heron was breeding near Rajghat, lost 70, 80 years ago. Why it has created heronry in Yamuna University Park? So these are some of the very uh, different aspects suggest that restoration is giving inputs, that uh, historical, what do you call, uh, um, those ranges are being reclaimed by various species. So those are indication, but soon we'll come out with some data set to speak with you. Yeah. Yeah. So sir, we will take <laughs> one last question from Mr. Banerjee there. Yeah, Banerjee. So, uh, so this is for uh, addition to what Vijay was asking of the data points of forest. So as what do you think the, the go-to reference point for generations, the champion in set, is getting eliminated because the way the discussion started that that one hectare of patch and 10 percent canopy this engineering outlook to forest so do you think and i didn't find the reference of i may be wrong but i didn't find the champion and set reference in the last fsi report which details 226 plus different types of vegetations from uh, high 50, canopy champion said, said 15 forest no, no, that is the broad classification, broad. but in the minute, I tell you, I tell you, uh, it's very interesting that one of the best definition of forest you will find with champion set. If you go through it, that is the best definition. Champion set cannot be eliminated, sir, whether I write or not. That is the basic point to discuss when I'm working in Chambal, looking at those Chambal ravines, and um, how we have eliminated many species, especially Prosopis in area, that what you call as, they call it as a chekur there, or we call it as a, kya kenge usko, prosopis in area is, that is uh, khejri or shami, shami bhi kehte hain. So I have seen that, uh, how that prosopis in area being eliminated by prosopis, Julie Flora working right there in Bhind, Morena areas, in Chambal areas. So still I have taken note from whom, champion and set. So champion and set is not going to die, I, that I assure you. Even <laughs> when yesterday I was talking to Professor Babu, sir, how do you see forest? He said, you can take, you see champion and set. So champion set is not going to die. At least, at least up to our generation. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously uh, all I the working I plans of like the forest. Add, yeah. There is a concerted effort now to look at eco-regions. Yes. And now create more data points 
as to look at microhabitats. You know, I mean, for two people to do such a major work, I think we need to now enhance that work, not to replace it, but to enhance it by ecoregions, eco microhabitats within those ecoregions. And we have lost a lot, but there is still that we can save and restore. Actually, very interestingly, you mentioned this bunch of said. So in the working plans, in the EI reports, <coughs> the user citation, like whenever we mention a forest class, so I think like every species has a citation. So whenever we define forest in India, we'll always use champion yes, <laughs> We cannot said. go away with the citation. At least in the citation, it will exist. Yeah, so with, yeah. with this, I think uh, we should move to the uh, thing. So I will invite uh, my colleague Himangshu to please hand over this uh, small token of memento <laughs> to Dr. Fayaz. Should I come there? No. Yet, sir. Thank you so much, Himanshu. So, sir, uh, first of all, I want to thank you uh, for taking your time from busy schedule. So, whenever I call him, since like I know him, he's always on some field or doing some important work. And this is something like I really uh, appreciate taking your time because for you, your heart lies in the field, you know, <laughs> working. But this uh, information should be like you know shared with uh, everyone as well. And thank you very much for sharing your honest opinions, like being very. But don't share outside. <laughs> so it's we will recorded. be putting this as a recording <laughs> on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so this is being recorded and we put it on the YouTube also. <laughs> so uh, also I request everyone uh, to please do visit Yamuna Basri Park. And Any uh, Barasti Park, there are seven yeah. Barasti Park. You visit Yamuna, Aravali, Tilpadveli, Tughlaqabad. And also Vijay has also set up a nice <laughs> uh, birds park in Aravali. Parks that are being created in Ghaziabad and Moida. Yeah, those are like concrete else. By somebody else and other We have suggested. Yeah, if you want to see the comparison between the nest restoration and the planted, then you should go to like. A forest, difference between afforestation, yeah. reforestation, and ecological restoration. Yeah. The clear distinction. <laughs> what is uh, like you know, so <laughs> what we discussed, and uh, yeah, and you must visit this park and get some uh, not only his interact with him, get knowledge, but also get inspiration. Like whenever I go to the Thank park, you. I always get inspired and to learn. As I always learn something from you every time yeah. I go. Thank this you, Devu. What I enjoy thank about. You, and thank you everyone for joining today in our discussion. Thank you. Please do join for our next sessions. And I would like to thank my colleagues Himangshu, Shashank, Keshav for their help. And also sign language interpreters, Atul and Manisha. Mm -hmm. and special thanks to Environmental Foundation and Mr. Sandeep Singhal for supporting the work of our climate ecosystem team at Vidhi. And we will be uploading this talk on YouTube. The link you will get very soon. And do Bob subscribe our <laughs> Twitter and social media. Thank you for your support. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.